YouTubes. Welcome back to James Recommends. I want to talk a little bit about last week's episode, Wasteland 2, because there was a ton of discussion and it was awesome. I love seeing that much discussion about any of these things. Fundamentally, what I was trying to say was not that it's a terrible game, because it's not, right? There are not a lot of CRPGs out there. If you like that sort of thing, I actually do recommend it. But for all its strengths, I think for designers especially, it's more valuable to look at for its weaknesses because uh, unlike games like Dark Souls or Super Meat Boy, uh, we've seen so many games take what's great about those old school experiences, those late 80s, early 90s experiences, and bring them into the modern age and take all the things that were terrible about those experiences and use everything we've learned over the last 25 years to sort of improve on the things that weren't so great about those uh, late AIDS experiences. And this is where Wasteland 2 fails to me, right? It delivers on a lot of things that are really good about that early CRPG era. But honestly, given all the time that's passed, I feel like it should be comparable to, if not better than, Fallout 2. And in my opinion, it, it's simply not, because uh, it uses a lot of the strength that it had way back in the day, but it hasn't really learned anything since it, it, it has nothing, it hasn't built on those roots, right? And to me, this is a failing. This is where a lot of improvement can be done, because I think we've, we've lost in a lot of ways so many great things about old school gaming. But that doesn't mean that everything about old school gaming was great and that in our current productions, the best we can do is just replicate what we did back then. All right, so given that, this week I want to talk about a game that I've back and forth I was going to talk about and then I wasn't going to talk about and then I was going to talk about. So anyway. God Factory Wingman. I'm gonna just make this disclaimer, right? Most games that I can talk about, period, I probably know somebody on the production team, but in the case of God Factory Wingman, these guys have been friends of the show for a long time. I've known these guys, I pulled them up on stage during extra credits panels. Uh, I am willing to admit, I'd like to say I'm not, I don't think I am, but even so, I'm willing to just accept, probably biased. Okay, give you that caveat. Given that, I want to talk about God Factory Wingman because I actually think it's interesting, right? And if I eliminate all the interesting games that are made by people I know, I'm going to be left with nothing, right? Including things I've... yeah. Anyway, God Factory Wingman. God Factory Wingman is somewhere between a space dog fighting game and a MOBA, which sounds crazy, and it is, which is why I like it. If you want an experience like Wing Commander or um, are looking for something that is uh, squad based, team based, co-op, uh, team v team multiplayer, right? You could do a lot worse than God Factory Wingman. So this is one of those games that truth be told, and I've said it other places, made me want to buy a joystick for my computer. That is the feeling that I want from a space dogfighting game, right? And there's lots of space games coming out. There's probably gonna be a lot of really good things, but I haven't experienced anything like this in, I mean, God, 20 years. This is a game that really captures that experience of this fast-paced space fighter pilot where it's not about just dogfighting in space, although they've got some really great maneuverability stuff, right? If you're a designer, you probably want to look at all the ways that they did their space maneuvering because doing your your Immelmans or whatever are something that not only the player is capable of this in this game, but they found some really interesting and unique uh, control solutions to give the player the flexibility to do all this really cool dogfighting maneuvers that you always want to do, but you can never execute because you have to be super hardcore at these games to do. So that's one area where, it, where it's awesome. Another area where it's awesome and where it's really unique is that this isn't just spaceship versus spaceship in terms of your fighters versus team other fighters. 
this game is about having two huge carriers duke it out and you're you're the space fighter pilot in between right and you can do everything from the bombing runs to taking out pieces of equipment right and they all do different things taking out the shields or uh the guns or even going into the ship like flying into it and taking out the core right these are all things that you're able to do in this game and the goal of the game is to destroy the opponent's carrier and not each of their individual ships, each of their individual little fighters. Uh, this creates a much more dynamic battle environment than simply having it be a uh, multiplayer deathmatch sort of game. So I think that's great. I really like these elements. I think there's a lot of innovation there. On top of that, there's a really deep ship crafting system where every single part of your ship can be swapped out for other pieces, and there's an EVE Online sort of energy and weight requirement uh, system for what you can put in what each socket and it's not binary right in most games when you have those sort of requirements either you're over the weight limit and you can't play this thing or you're under it and you can in this game you've got a system where the more weight you have it slows down your maneuverability right makes you uh, less capable of doing those turns move less fast it doesn't actually stop you from doing any of these things uh, and so there's a lot more dynamic decision making about what the best build actually is rather than trying to just find the best stuff that you can cram in at that weight limit. So that said, right, interesting gameplay has got a really good uh, space dogfighting system, really interesting good control scheme in my opinion for space dogfighting if that's something that you as a player or as a designer are looking at problems with the game really information overload uh, I love you guys but game is has a great deal of complexity right there's a fair amount of depth there but the complexity is overwhelming first off just going into these missions learning all the things that you're supposed to do is I mean there's tons of different ship parts to take out everybody has different weapons all weapons actually do different and unique things you have a system where you've actually you're actually bringing in two ships not one ship to the combat and you can dock one ship to have it regen sort of like tagging out in a fighting game while you bring in your other ship so there's just like huge amounts of stuff to do not even talking about the objective stuff what blowing up the radar tower does versus blowing up one of the guns right on the opponent's big ship so tons of complexity there and then on top of that when you get into the ship customization oh man every single piece of equipment has like seven different unique attributes there's some of them that have just a bunch of text talking about it so there's a lot of stuff there it's a lot thrown at you right away and it's pretty hard to process this this ui ux combination makes it just a, a monumental load that gets in the way of the raw visceral enjoyment of the dogfighting. If you can get past that, it does actually make the dogfighting better, right? There is depth to be found there. It's just a lot to handle when you first jump in. So that's number one. Number two is the problem that every sort of indie game, multiplayer, team-based game is going to have. It's hard to find a match, a good, well-balanced match against other human beings. This is a huge problem, and this is going to be a problem for any, if any of you guys are designing a game that requires that you have five people per side, uh, it's going to be difficult to make sure that it's even and balanced with the small pool of people that you're going to have from your limited indie community, unless you can really go big, right? And in this game, that, that is, that is a, a, a large difficulty to overcome. Uh, hopefully, as the game grows, that won't be a problem, but you'll either find yourself just queuing up against AI, which is not bad. I mean, it's a great way to learn the game, but uh, since there's no single player campaign, if you can't find a match against other human beings, there's not a lot else to do. Uh, lastly, they only have one map. To me, wasn't a problem, right? League of Legends, yes, League of Legends has multiple maps, Dota, I'm sure, but Fundamentally, the majority of the games that have ever been played of League of Legends are on one map, and that's sort of what we got here, right? I didn't mind the fact that there was only one map at the time, but that's the other thing I would warn you about 
as you go into this experience. But if you are looking for space dogfighting, right, and you're looking for something that feels smooth and really you feel slick, you feel good, well, you feel like a space fighter pilot when you've really got it down, if that's what you're looking for this week, James recommends God Factory Wingman. See you all next week.